Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers! It's your boy, The Good Tonight, and I'm finally back after a long hiatus, getting back into the swing of things and knocking out this massive backlog of reviews that I've been sort of getting the apartment sort of set, situated, settled, everything organized. Still kind of suboptimal, but I think we're at a place where I can start filming again, and uh, I've got internet to actually upload videos. So let's get started. So as you may know from the video description already, today we're reviewing a product by Sean Concepts. Guys who make uh, pretty cool, unique play carriers and all sorts of sort of custom original gear. And um, yeah, they make interesting stuff. So one of the things I've always been sort of struggling with has been uh, knife placement. And as you kind of see, what we have here today is the Shawshank version 2. Constantly going between usually like blade tech mounts and trying to get it on, to set mount on the belts, but it was never in a comfortable position or it was easy to put back. Trying to mount it on the plate carrier, doing all sorts of crazy things involving Velcro. They, uh, they, I did see the Shawshank at one point. I was like, hey, that seems like a pretty interesting concept. It'd be worth trying out. And it disappeared from the website. Turns out I was looking at it right as they were going through development of the version 2, which is what we're going to be looking at today. And I kind of got two of them. I have a... Weird tendency, the whole expression of uh, two is one and one is none, so I always end up kind of getting doubles of everything and trying to figure out what cool things I can make work with both of those. So, what this is designed for, as you may have figured from the whole shank thing, is it's designed to hold a knife. And it goes into sort of a uh, old school sort of a plate carrier mentality. You used to have the whole front and back flap and you would cinch them down together at the sides. And um, I know the Marine Corps is always trying to get massive like front loads so you can have eight magazines and double stack pouches. And having like more of that front plate bag sort of setup has always been sort of a... Uh, it's been an older design. They kind of cut them down to, um, was it, three mags up front and a little, uh, was it, molly rolly, rolling, ah, six molly setups to cover, well, pretty much the size of the plate. And that became sort of the new thing that Cry set up and everyone started following along with. And you sort of lost those side parts. I'm a, I mean, the JPC did come out with those little embedder radio pouches and attachments you could put there, and then you could put magazines and stuff in. And it was a pretty decent idea. It worked pretty well. This is generally designed to be fitted under a triple cover bun, but we're running it on a AVS with the harness. And these pouches that come with it are... Uh, we're going to be taking a look at those in depth here, but they're a little mesh-backed, so if they're up against your body, they're actually comfortable. With the Cry Airlight radio pouch, which I'm unfortunately not in possession of at the moment, because I ended up selling it with my SPC to help someone out. Um, got the radio in one of the pouches here. Sort of a unique setup. It's a little bit too small, but we're going to be discussing that here in a minute, because it's generally designed for the uh, shiv we got going on here. So, what does all this entail? Well, I am glad you asked and clicked the video. So... We pop this open. One of the first key tips I'll tell you guys is um, if you are running the single band on an AVS, run it just a little bit lower. I used to keep it high and tight, but only just a bit lower so it covers the uh, thing a bit more. Gets rid of the, a lot of the excessive movement. It makes it a bit easier. So let's pop these free real quick, and we're just gonna rip this guy. Off. Bam! Alrighty. So what do we got going on here? Well, what you have is that uh, tigress material, that crazy composite that they like to uh, line stuff with. And that kind of gives you a stiffening support on a little wing flap here. And yeah, you got uh, cut out slots. This is all laser cut, freaking uh, that crazy material. So they do have the tabs here at the bottom are similar to the, was it the Blue Force gear, sort of a Vel uh, Velcro laser cut thing. So you don't have any of the little buckles and stuff because that would interfere with the Tigris material. So, you can run other things here, like a grenade pouch, if you really wanted to. But, yeah, um, it's generally designed. you got the little mesh backing back here, so... What we got, what they do is they do send you, um... Where's my little thing at? When you, ah! Plate carrier. It does come with its own Velcro. I have my own Velcro that's a bit thinner, so it fits better with the um, knife we got here. What we have is a Tor freaking uh, Serpent knife, so... Let me get it out here. It's going to be a minute so we can talk about the pouch and everything. So yeah, we just put the Velcro on the sides. This is all the, um, was it the fuzzy or the Sharpie Velcro? And this is all the fuzzy Velcro on the inside. So we move it off to the side. What you do is you can also flip this upside down like we got going on here with the radio. And uh, you just weave that through there. It goes in down there through the, um, the molly and stuff and connects. And of course, mesh to be somewhat comfortable against your body. 
there's this little, um, little what should I call it, the little whole eyelet thing for running cordage. It does not come with cordage, but if you're trying to set up something crazy, you can make that work or have some sort of like extra retention going on. A little thing to keep your dummy cord, all your gear together. But yeah, pretty basic. And, um, interestingly enough, as you can see here, it does fit a radio, but it's a little awkward because I've got the... I'm using Kenwoods at the moment. Are these Kenwoods? Yeah, Kenwood radios. And as you can see, they'll fit perfectly in there, as is, like a nice little setup. But, unfortunately, once you add in that little plug there, the plug gets caught on the side. It's just faintly too small to effectively run a radio. So at this point, I do think the uh, Airlight freaking uh, radio pouch is gonna work a bit better. Also considering you can fold it up underneath and it'll work fine. I'm gonna I'll, when I I'll do a video later when uh, the uh, new radio pouch comes in. But as you can see with the um, this one, just a little bit too small for radios, which is fine. You can still fit uh, magazines in there. Where is my? I gotta stop putting stuff everywhere. Where's a good magazine? There's a good magazine. Just chilling down here. Take a magazine, and you can also slide that in there, and bam, you can uh, plus one your mag count. Easy peasy. Keep it on the cover button out of the way. And, um, yeah, so, cool stuff. Why don't you do it? I was thinking about falling. So why put this on an AVS? Well, the AVS has this nice little um, setup here, so things aren't necessarily against the body, and a lot of the AVS design is to mount stuff onto this little um, arm here. Problem is, that stuff is always going to be off to the side, and particularly with radios, the problem I generally ran into was having the radio up on here, I've got to constantly plug it in and out and move it about, and here I can just set it up, run all my cables, zip tie those into place, and the radio's not going to go anywhere, which is good. I like that. I like So I can actually take this on and off without having to plug in the radio and move stuff around all the time. I do, however, have to still take the radio out to turn it on and off, change the channel and whatnot. So as far as that goes, how am I making that work? Well, I'm glad you asked, because through the Grand Marine Corps art I learned of ghetto rigging, we took some uh, extra Velcro here, we ran that over the top, and if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could go down to the um, custom tactile, or was it tactical gear store, and have them make some Velcro sort of like clip setup so I can actually button and unbutton it and adjust the, um, so like a insert, so I can keep the radio in place and not worry about flying out. There is a lot of spare room down here at the bottom because it doesn't fit all the way in, but with this on top, I can basically add some retention so my radio's not gonna go flying away or anything crazy. With the way this is set up, all I have to do is peel this front part out of the way, and I can access my radio. Shabam. And the cords are all zip tied, so you don't need to go too far. I just need to be able to turn it on. Error, yeah, because it's not plugged into anything effectively. Oh. Hey! Alrighty. I can turn that off. And then I have to set the radio up. I just gotta make sure the Velcro is open. Again, this would be better with a. Uh, a custom-made solution, but with the art of ghetto rigging, I think we'll be okay. In the meantime, flip that back over. Shabam! Radio setup. Easy peasy. So that's a cool thing. This is my setup in the meantime until I get another air light emitter. So I think these work great for shivs, not so well for radios, also fantastic for mags. And you can also throw tourniquets and stuff like that. Tourniquet might get stuck, given how much uh, Velcro is going on there, so... Get my, uh, oh, also, Barry Compliant, made in the USA. Very based, very Gucci. Um, and yeah, as you see, all the soft Velcro in there, giving you some space to work with. This is a bit uh, doubled up. They do stitch over the freaking uh, mesh stuff to help keep everything together. Very nice touch. The laser cut, laser cut's nice. I used to um, think that it wouldn't hold up as well or it'd lose its shape and stuff, but over time, and with all the lasers to cut, ah! Laser cut gear, I've got it over the years, I have noticed that it actually holds up very well. And lighter than the sole, sort of molly webbing setup, so. The laser cut, laser cut's a good choice. I think they did a solid there. And it does give you a good deal of flexibility. There is grommets for your amphibious operations. And yeah, so all you gotta do to get your fun little blade set up in there is make sure the Velcro doesn't catch until it's as deep in as you need it. And you can fit a pretty wide knife, we're talking like, because, I mean, it is M4 magazine sized, so a knife that's about as wide, maybe even slightly wider, an M4 mag, 
is still going to fit very nicely in there. Mine's actually looking a little small in there. Um, yeah, so it's a cool thing. And then to set that back up, all you got to do, and you can adjust the height. One of the things I was running into issues with, running my, uh, where is it, that little Blatech freaking, uh, where'd he go? He left. Oh my god, he's gone. No, there he is. Hold on. I was trying to run this guy through there, and this was working out pretty well on the Molly setup, but um, ultimately the problem was the blade was always sitting too high up. If I wasn't running on a triple cover bond, I've been trying to cut down on the weight to make things lighter. So the triple cover bond, this guy, the little ring, is right up in that arm, just constantly giving me problems. So putting it on here, I've been able to move it down significantly lower. Oh, is that X cut? Oh, that's cool. There's a little X cut from the Tigris. You can't really see it, but where it's stitched in is literally where they put the material to make it all work. So that's uh, just Velcro in between that uh, that X shape. So secret X-Men symbology? Perhaps. I don't know. Deepest lore. I'd have to ask them. All you gotta do to get this set up is put this guy. Oh my god, I can't see. Oh, there we go. All right. Easy peasy. Yep. Set that up there. And I like keeping this stuff up here. I like having this as a barrier between whatever I got going on. Then being able to run the single cable. If you run it up high, it uh, runs the risk of being uh, cut by the knife. Not a suboptimal, some might say. But if you run it lower like that, you're out of the way of the blade. You can still draw it. You can return it. And everything is fine. Also being a bit lower, I'm not going to run my arm into there and cause myself any undue problems. I'm back over here with my incredibly ghetto radio setup. Run that one a bit low too, make sure the radio's not going anywhere. Everything's good there, just the volume. PTT, everything is Gucci and copacetic. So yeah, what are you doing? There you go. Yep, so pretty flexible. Um, you could run other pouches in there if you so chose. I unfortunately don't have any other pouches that would be really compatible with this setup that aren't uh, like grenade pouches and putting a grenade pouch in here it's one of those things that you can do but not really one of those things you necessarily should do but it's an option so and this is the adaptable vest system or adaptive vest system or ABS what do they call it so you can move stuff around and make things all wonky and crazy if you so choose and of course I do have the, where the hell did I put it? Oh, it's over here. Neat. And of course this is the um, big old Embedder radio pouch that it comes with. Sits significantly lower and like I said it hangs off of that arm there. So every time you move your radio out you got cable management to be concerned with. And I like to have my stuff sort of just mounted once and done. And not have to fiddle around with radio cables anymore outside of just plugging my helmet in there. So yeah. So... Oh, another thing is with the Tigris material, there's not, um, you could probably get some sort of like cover material made or something simple just to make sure you're keeping your camouflaged all coyote brown or you cool kids with your multi-cam or multi-glam or whatever crazy camo pattern you got on going on. I'm sure with a little bit of effort you can make something probably with some elastic or some clips or something that just mounts in. Probably there's a... Well, there's like three holes. Yeah, I got Velcro or zip ties right there. And there's like three holes on the side there, and I'm sure you can figure out something to mount through there and around over there. Get just enough under there to stay in place, and basically cover up that uh, futuristic cyberpunk sort of tigress checkerboard silver you got going on, because it is going to somewhat, to a small degree, impact your uh, overall profile, visually speaking. And, more importantly, aesthetically speaking. But, I mean, if you like it, even better. If you don't, then you, there's, um, I'm sure there's going to be solutions coming down the line in the near future. So, Shine Concepts, I'm definitely going to be keeping the shiv solution, because I can keep my shiv on me. It's out of the way. It's not causing me problems. It's always readily accessible if I need to uh, cut a cake. Or, you know, those, those other things in that list that General Mattis had going on. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you got any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'm going to be uh, probably fiddling around with these a bit more. And um, yeah, ultimately, it's good to be back. One final thing, 
And this is sort of just like a fun extra I wanted to throw into the video. But if you guys are familiar with these three boxes I am holding right now, then I just wanted to let you know that you are a very cool person. And that, out of tons of people I meet, I show them stuff like those boxes or tell them about the game they come from, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Except one guy, and that one guy was like, Yo, kindred spirit! So, yep, that's all I got for you guys. Everything's nice, comfy, out of the way. Radio works. Shiv is easily accessible. A little bit of silver. I think I could always run that a bit lower. And yeah, you can also mount it at a cant if you really wanted to. There's some other crazy things that they suggest you can do with these, if you so chose. This new setup's taking a while to get used to. I put stuff down and it's like gone forever, so... That's all I got for you guys. If you have any questions for me, feel free to put them down in the comments. If you think it'll work with some certain things, you got some crazy measurement questions or stuff like that, feel free to let me know. This will be hanging out here on the plate carrier for a bit. And um, yeah, pretty happy with the setup. The only thing I feel can be a little bit better optimized is the radio. That's the only thing. And that's uh, not really Sean Concepts thing. That's more of uh, me just wanting to make things a bit more uh, comfortably sitting so that sits a bit lower more comfortably compacted and uh, ultimately out of the way. Speaking of, with that Airlight radio pouch, the reason I did end up selling it with the SPC was because it did have that cool structural cover run thing going on. It also used the Tigris going through there. But ultimately what the problem was, was there wasn't any sort of like mesh padding, which is why I think this is a really cool idea. Because I didn't have the fancy arms on the SPC. The SPC, that stuff's right up against your body. And when you got little was it that air light material and a hard object within it, it sort of just rubs into your ribs a lot. And I don't know if you've had things dig into your ribs before with your gear, but it ultimately kind of sucks. It sucks almost as much as having stuff rub into your arms when you're trying to move, so. Full mobility. Mobility good. Yes. Fewer ch lower chance of injury, so. Yeah, so. I think with this setup, I can actually run the Airlight radio and it's going to work a lot better and still let me have access to my little radio. And in the event that I do get bigger, big brain, smart man radio, then I can also just do, undo the trick I got in there and keep that up on here too. And if I really want to, I can throw in another thing and slap it on the arm, so. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so the video went on a bit longer. Because I almost forgot that's an important piece of information there that you guys need, so. Cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.